want to start? Sure. My closing remarks are very short. Um, let me bring up the brightness in case I decide to uh, look at notes. But there was a remark made in the beginning by Joey that referred to incrementalism. And I'm very fond of telling people that incrementalism is the enemy of creativity. Uh, and it's a very big enemy <clears throat> because we tend to be incremental. Our parents advised us to be incremental and there is a whole sort of natural tendency to take small steps. And as I was thinking of the presentations, I realized that Steve Jobs left us with a very important legacy, which was written very well uh, in Walter Isaacson's recent book, which if you haven't read it, I suggest you do. And throughout the book, there is a steady drumbeat about art and technology. I happen to know Steve very well, especially in the 1980s, and I introduced him to Ed Land, who was the founder of Polaroid. And while it's not documented in the book, it's the case that Steve learned a lot about art and technology um, through Ed Land. Also not known very widely is that Jerry Wiesner, whom I talked about this morning, was given some money in the late 1970s to build an art gallery. And when he received that money, I didn't know him quite that well, but I knew him well enough <clears throat> to suggest that he not build an art gallery, but that he build something at MIT that was to art what all of our other departments were to their respective fields and that just building an art gallery was like building a tennis court, that it was good for the body but not relevant to MIT, and that an art gallery would be good for the mind and not particularly relevant to MIT. And by chance, I had been, or was it, the academic head of the various pieces at MIT that included photography, graphic design, film, computer animation, and so on. And so when we brought them together, we were doing exactly what Steve Jobs ended up doing in life. And if you read the book, I'm not saying this, I'm just telling you what's in the book, you will also hear a lot about how Microsoft and Bill Gates were sort of heartless, artless people. And I think there's a great importance in there because as companies go forward, they're going to find that design is strategic. And I think that will be very new. It's already starting to happen. Young people, my sample is, is not enormous, but a lot of young people who wanted to go to business school 15 years ago, I find more and more want to go to design school today. And companies that don't even make products are interested in design as strategy because it's a different point of view. So one of the things that the Media Lab offers and for existing and prospective members is that different point of view. And it's a very heterogeneous place and the art side of it, which has attenuated a little bit but is gonna go back up uh, very shortly when we make some new hires, is absolutely critical. And many people think, well, no, that's, that's the sissy computer science. Uh, in fact, it's not. And I just want to leave you with one last thought, is that less than 1% is spent on the conception of products. Less than 1% of corporations' expenses are devoted to the creation and the conception of a product or an idea. That's really astonishing. And the other 99% is execution and supply chain and sales and manufacturing and delivery and so on. So if you get the 1% wrong, you're really in trouble. And so that's one of the reasons I think 
people come in the early stages because they'll get these very, very different uh, points of view. I think that was all I wanted to say, and I will leave you with that, and we'll open it up Some to questions. questions. Um, and That's so basically, kind of to riff, should I speak in English or Japanese? I'm happy to get my headset. Maybe, maybe do I'll speak do it. in it's Japanese. It's probably better to speak in Japanese. で、今あの、ニコラスがえっと、スティーブ・ジョブズの話をしたんですけども、あの、一つアップルの歴史を振り返ってみると重要なのが一番アップルが危機に陥ってピンチだった時に、あの、そこで何をしたかっていうとその